Live from my news up here at Adesawe in Kanda, this is News 360. My name is Alfred Okansi. And I am Aisha Yakubu. A look at our headlines this evening. News 360 headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Paid and Piccadilly Biscuits, My Life Insurance. Residents of communities close to Pon landfill sites fear contracting respiratory diseases following six days of inhaling smoke from raging fire. And 38-year-old Mohammed Sadat declared wanted in connection with Asantehene's Asamponhene's murder. Also, NDC puts on hold parliamentary primaries in five constituencies. National Communications Authority to retrieve and confiscate uncertified mobile phones and substandard communication gadgets from the market. Elsewhere in the world, Nigeria goes three years without a case of polio, putting it on the brink of being declared free of the disease. We get details of these and more tonight here on News 360. Remember, we're live on DSTV Channel 279, all across the world on TV3 Ghana, on Facebook, and on 3news.com. Let's set off our first story this evening, where 38-year-old Sadat Mohammed has been declared wanted in connection with the murder of the Asantehens, Asampohen. Sadat, also known as Al-Haji, was last seen in the company of the late chief. Otum Force Asampohene Nana Kujo Fodjo was murdered by unknown assailants while traveling on the Jira in Kranza Road on Sunday, August 18. Sadat Mohammed alias Al Haji has been named in the suspected murder case. He is reported to have traveled together with the late chief until reports of his murder emerged. The Ashanti Regional Deputy Police Commander, ACP David Ajumanachim, told the media in Kumasi, three persons have been arrested to assist in investigations. Sadat Mohammed has been declared wanted by the Ashanti Regional Police Command. And so we entreat any person who knows this gentleman, his whereabouts, or has any information on him, to kindly come to us and provide that information. Meanwhile, four persons, two males and two females, have been arrested in connection with the murder of Corporal Bernard Intry, who was shot dead by unknown persons while on duty at Manso in Quanta. Efforts are also underway to get some other persons who have been implicated in the um, incident. Some LPG consumers in Kumasi are requesting government to review the gas cylinder recirculation policy. This follows an indefinite strike by LPG operators over the implementation of the policy. The cylinder recirculation model policy is aimed at providing direction for marketing and distribution of LPG in a safe and efficient manner, as well as facilitate an increase in access to LPG nationwide. LPG operators in the Ashanti region say consumers cannot suffer the consequences of poor policy implementation and declared an indefinite strike. Gas retail outlets in the metropolis were shut on Wednesday, leaving consumers stranded. Some affected consumers pleaded with government to review the policy to enable the LPG operators resume work. Monday, no I have not been able to get LPG since Monday. Government must take a second look at this policy. The Goyal LPG outlets were however doing brisk business. Implementation of the recirculation policy will require siting of retail outlets out of the densely populated areas and commercial centers. But the operators say the policy will render many people jobless. 
situation is on in Kumasi. We're recording some also in Shinyai in the Bonahafu region as well. Keep an eye out on this particular situation with the gas uh, sellers who have been able to withdraw their services. The National Democratic Congress, NDC, has put on hold parliamentary primaries in five constituencies. At the news conference in Accra, the General Secretary of the party, Johnson Esiedun Ketia, said polls in the remaining 270 constituencies will go ahead on Saturday, August 24, as scheduled. The affected constituencies are Fantiakwa North, Asomwase, Elembele, Mpoho, and Hilokrobo. General Secretary of the party, Johnson Esiedun Ketia, pointed some challenges in the five constituencies necessitating a postponement in the elections. We have constituency specific challenges. So it doesn't mean that all those that were cleared yesterday, uh, the election is not going to take place there. It doesn't, it doesn't follow. So uh, the problem that has come to our attention, we engage and deal with it uh, as and when. We, we deal with the problem. Because of uh, certain challenges, we have had to put five constituencies on hold. That happened by a decision of the Functional Executive Committee meeting. He said the identification document for the election are voters' ID or any other national ID or the party's ID. He admonished delegates to comport themselves since the laws governing elections in the country will be applied. The punishment for flouting the rules will be the same punishment for flouting electoral rules in the country. Because we are applying electoral rules. But besides that, if there are other party uh, rough and ready methods like denying you the right to vote, if you go and you go there to create problems and, uh, I mean, your presence there becomes too problematic for the smooth running of the process, I, 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 I believe the police know what to do. The General Secretary said executives of the party will not be called to go against the party's constitution. The National Communications Authority has served notice to retrieve and confiscate all uncertified mobile phones and substandard communication gadgets from the market and prosecute offenders. A type approval laboratory to test communications equipment imported into Ghana has already been activated. Its focus will be on radio frequency and signal lab, EMF lab, digital terrestrial television lab, and the SAR lab per the NCA Act 2008, Act 769, Section 3N, the authority is to certify and ensure the testing of communication equipment for compliance with standards. Manufacturers should also ensure that all manufactured equipment are type approved by the accredited institutions. Lastly, consumers and general public are entreated to only buy electronic equipment which have been certified by the NC. We do this to ensure compliance with the law as this is an offense for anyone to use, sell or offer for sale or connect to any telecommunication apparatus that is not authorized to be used in the country. According to the sector ministry, the fake phones on the market do not have the authentic international mobile equipment identity number and pose a health risk as they contain high radiation emissions. If you look at the statistics at the moment, that is, is about 40% of the devices connected to networks are estimated to be substandard or sometimes counterfeit. And we cannot at the moment come and stand here and say we will take it off totally, we, but we'll work with it. There are so many uh, 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 guides or approaches that we are, we are adopting. One of them is this regulation. So it will make it mandatory law for us, for us to deal with the, 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 the tiptoe guys that you have indicated. Because for now, the law is a bit relaxed, flexible for us to go in hard and deal with them. But when this law is passed, I think we will have the muscles to be able to work with them. The National Communications Authority in its drive has published the Draft Electronic Communications Equipment Type Approval Regulations 2019 for stakeholders to make their input. A nationwide stakeholders engagement has also commenced to take input. 
Well, only licensed and certified teachers will be allowed to practice the teaching profession. The Minister of State in charge of tertiary education, Professor Kwesi Yanka, made this known at the launch of the Ghana Teacher Prize 2019 here in Accra. Government, as part of reforms in the education sector, has introduced a number of policies, including new curriculum for lower primary pupils and teacher licensure exams, whereby newly trained diploma students from the various colleges of education are required to pass the exam before being allowed to teach. The education minister in a speech read on his behalf by the Minister of State in charge of tertiary education, Professor Kwesi Yanka, maintained teachers would be allowed to practice only when they have been duly certified. Calling oneself a teacher must no longer be open to just anyone, but rather only those who have undergone the necessary training, have met the relevant standards, and have been declared fit to practice the profession by a regulatory setup for that purpose. This pertains in other professions like law, medicine, pharmacy, and architecture. Teaching should therefore be no different. He stressed the need to ensure teachers are well groomed to understand the different learning abilities and respond accordingly. We must position our teachers and equip them sufficiently to embrace exciting opportunities ahead. It means the repositioning of the teacher this time as a facilitator of learning rather than one who force feeds information on the learner. The National Best Teacher Award scheme was in 2018 renamed and rebranded as Ghana Teacher Prize with international standards as the new benchmark. The acting executive secretary of the National Teaching Council, Christian Adaipoku, reiterated the NTC's commitment in recognizing the contributions of hardworking and selfless teachers. It is also important as a nation that we do our best to improve the lot of teachers and accord them their appropriate status in society. One of such means to acknowledge the pivotal role of teachers is the institutionalization of the Ghana Teacher Prize. The awards ceremony will be preceded by a two-day edu conference in Kumasi. And on NTN Video Reports this evening, citizen journalist Paul Nyoja Dalafu reports on his tall school building at Dilma in the northeast region. This incident it happened in the year of 2016, uh, 15th June 2016. It happened by a heavy wind blow came and then it broke up the distance, the zinc. And I guess to now we are in 2019. The, the school too, as the conflict came, the students, they stopped totally. That they cannot come and be sitting here without a master and without any support, so, someone supporting them to build up their talents. And the teachers of these schools who have left home and they never came back to see how the school is from now to now. We are just there with no concern. We don't know what is going on about the school. And then the district today came and put another district structure. That was in 2018. A heavily wind break and then that one too has been fall down. And then the quarters, it is, the, it is through the people of the community that they are able to put out distance for the teachers to stay. Like Paul, you can also send us your video report via WhatsApp 0551-433-044. That's 0551-433-044. Well, you're still live here on News 360. There's a lot more coming up tonight here on the news. We're live on TV3 Ghana on Facebook and on DSTV Channel 279. Stay with us. We'll be back. This is News 360. A very good evening to you. Thanks for staying with us. Time for business with me, Nana Ikuya Mensah Brampa. Beginning with tonight, the producer price index rose to 8.8% in July 2019. Now, this represents an increase of 1.7 percentage points from the 7.1% recorded in the month of June. 
The increase in the PPI for July was driven largely by the mining and quarrying sector. For the year-on-year -year inflation, the mining and quarrying sector recorded the highest inflation of 27.6% in July. It was followed by utility subsector with inflation of 6.9%, with manufacturing recording the lowest inflation of 5.4%. The utility subsector recorded the highest inflation rate of 5.9%, followed by mining and quarrying subsector with 4.8%. The manufacturing subsector recorded the lowest inflation of 0.3%. The PPI measures the average cost at which producers manufacture products. On to the banking sector now, and banking consultant Dr. Rich Tiahini has cast doubt over the prosecution of persons found culpable in the collapse of some banks and financial institutions, despite the assurance by the governor. Now, he insists active and retired officials of the central bank whose actions and inactions led to the crisis should never be left out and should be there be any prosecution. The Bank of Ghana in the years before had acted responsibly and dealt with some of these issues like they should have done. We've never have got to the situation where we are now. On the first phase of the banking scandal, 13 billion CDs had to come from public funds. Finding 13 billion CDs to support my budget is a major problem for me. The banking sector cleanup commenced in August 2017. Two years on, not much has been done concerning the prosecution of directors and shareholders and other officials of the collapsed banks. Though the governor of the central bank, Dr. Ernest Addison, has served notice of prosecution by the close of the year, banking consultant Dr. Richmond Etuyahene says he has little confidence in the process. I have little confidence in that. That one I'll have to be very bold because he, I always use the Nigerian experience. Mrs. Eburu, the owner of Oceanic Bank, he did a similar thing what has been done in this country. They charged him under fraud, financial fraud, and money laundering. He was sent to prison six months. And by the time he came back, her assets, buildings, including houses, have been sold, and they retrieved one billion euro. Not one billion dollar euro to defray the debt. 2017 up to now, what are we seeing? He insisted, should there be any prosecution, it should go beyond the shareholders and directors of the defunct banks and finance institutions. It is not only the shareholders, it is not only the directors. The license were not given to, it was not just a license people picked. Somebody signed and gave the license. All those people, are, if are found culpable, must face the full rigors of the law. Whether he's retired or whether he's active, if he's found culpable, and I'm sure they'll be found culpable. He lauded the media for an extensive work done, which has subsequently allayed the fears of the public regarding the license revocation. He described the current situation as consequences of a 2014 warning by IMF and tagged the central bank to ensure the full compliance of directives and various regulations. Now, away from the banking sector, Media General and Casapreco Company have pledged to sustain their partnership to impact positively on society. Management of Media General called on Casapreco Company as it marks 20 years of its Alumu Bites brand. The group CEO of Media General, Beatrice Sajimanabe, who led the delegation, commended Casapreco Company Limited for successes chalked and briefed its management on additions to the Media General platform. This is first and foremost to congratulate Alumo Bites uh, for your 20 years. It's no mean feat achievement. I think you have done tremendously well. We are here to say a big thank you to you for doing business with us. It's been over as close as you have been in existence, we launched our new television station, which is Onia TV. We also launched Akuma, also in Ashanti region, which is um, our radio station there. And I know your brand is across the country, and so it's important that we tell you about, about that also. Chief Operating Officer of Media General, Winfred Afo, highlighted opportunities for partnership. With the programming for Onia TV, people always want things that will offer them inspiration, things that will give them empowerment. 
And so we've really, really done quite some huge research. In regards to TV3, um, we have one of our flagship programs coming up, which is Mentor. Managing okay. Director of Casa Preco Company, Richard J commended Media General for expanding its reach and TV3 for being one of the pillars which has contributed to the growth of the Casa Preco brand. The business has ridden on the popularity of your stations and your platforms for some time now and we hope that it continues. I am glad that you are also um, stepping up your game in the three um, platforms. So certainly we would also look at those platforms. He outlined new projects the company was embarking on. We um, are expanding into the Ashanti region. We are building up a new factory over there. We hope to launch it um, around November. The new factory also creates employment. We have also applied for the one district, one factory. Um, this also to support um, the government's program. The company presented its new water brand, Smart Choice, to Media General. Well, you can visit 3news.com for more business updates. That will do for tonight. My name is Nanikia Minsabrapa. Alfred. Well, Nanikia, thank you for business. But it's not business as usual for the residents uh, of communities close to the Poon landfill site. They fear contracting respiratory diseases following six days of inhaling smoke as raging fire wrecks havoc in the area. Though some residents have relocated, many are helpless and remain indoors. Josephine Frimpong has more. Communities including Pong Kokompe, Seti Reality Estate, Pong Affordable Housing, PS Global and other parts of Tema Committee 26 are still covered in smoke. On our previous visit, we met Kwabna Iwelda, he intended to relocate just like others, but he has aborted his plan. I wanted to relocate, but just as I planned, robbers invaded my home, so that prevented me. I'm afraid if I leave, my property will be stolen. He added that it's becoming more unbearable living in the community. My children have started coughing seriously at night. I'm worried they might contract some diseases. Others shared similar sentiments. Some of our friends who are asthmatic have relocated because of the smoke. Though the smoke being inhaled by residents could lead to an outbreak of diseases, officials of Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, says they are mapping up a plan to deal with it. NADMO also says the best they can offer is to advise residents to relocate. Those who are in their real homes, we will have find a way to talk to them. Then maybe you have a family or relative somewhere, can go and then be with the person for us to make sure we were able to resolve that problem. Because in Adumo, we don't have much to ask, oh, we will get a room for you, we will get a place for you. No. Some companies located in the area have suspended the operations with their management who would not speak on camera, disturbed over the implications of their shutdown. The Pong landfill site was relocated in 2012 to replace an old one with four cells. It has been, however, turned into a garbage dumping site where over 1,200 metric tons of waste daily from Tema and six assemblies in the greater Accra region is carted. We are dumping at the old site. In fact, uh, we've already prepared ourselves against any such emergency. So with the fire range, as you can all see, we immediately move equipments to the old site and we are receiving waste at that site. So we don't have any challenge as to where to dump for now. He said the fire service will need more resources to fight the blaze. Over 60% of our garbage means organic. So this organic will decay. And uh, when organic decays, we have gas. Continuous generation of gas so with the kind of fires that we are having 
it is not something like ordinary fire that you ask get the Ghana fire service to go and stop the best out of the situation is to control the fire within the landfill so that it doesn't spread to properties beyond the landfill just been from porn tv3 news now let's take a look at some of the effects air pollution can have on people, specifically the people at Boom. And it can lead to asthma, uh, also bronchitis and emphysema. Uh, it can also cause heart problems and even cancer or premature death. Also, um, air pollution can lead to fatigue, headaches, dizziness as well as nausea. Air pollution is linked to more than uh, 28,000 premature deaths in Ghana every year. Also, mortality rate for air pollution in Ghana was about 203 for every 100,000 people in 2016. And this is according to the World Health Organization. Over to you, Alfred. It is bring to question the, the, how clean the air we are breathing on a normal day is. So all these vehicular emissions are around. But graduates at the Accra Business School have been taxed to create jobs and to reduce unemployment in the country. At the school's seventh congregation ceremony here in Accra, president of the school, Bishop Gideon Titiofe, encouraged graduates to establish and maintain the values of the school. Formerly known as the Graduate School of Governance and Leadership, the Accra Business School is accredited to offer globally recognized postgraduate, undergraduate and professional programs. The school aims to develop a new breed of global business leaders who will be able to create jobs, increase incomes and reduce poverty across Africa. The seventh graduation ceremony saw 160 students awarded degrees. President of Accra Business School, Bishop Gideon Titiofe, challenged the graduating class to endeavor to venture into entrepreneurship to create jobs. We decided to create a school that can create job creators. So Accra Business School creates job creators. And this is evidence in the number of people we have added today. Our um, students have gone out of our campuses to go establish companies made impact in this country. And we are very hopeful that today the people who will be graduated will do the same. The dean of the school, Professor Elvis Cornerstone, outlined some new programs expected to be rolled out soon. We also expect that people will be trained in the area of research. The essence of this is to help them solve deeper problems within the country. At the end of the day, they are able to investigate further on their quest for knowledge and truth. The overall best student and valedictorian, Paul Nati, shared his experience on how the journey has been so far. They have a good program. I looked at the content of their program and I saw that this is cutting edge. It's not like uh, just academia, rumble and all of that. So I could relate with the course content that it is innovative, it's cutting edge. Accra Business School is an affiliate of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Ghana, Australian Institute of Business, Adelaide, Australia, and the awards for training and higher education, Norwich, UK. Now, Malcolm Care Foundation, together with Accra Metropolitan Assembly, have embarked on an exercise to plant one million trees in Accra. The initiative is to beautify and build a resilient city and also improve air quality. The exercise, intended to be a wake-up call for Ghanaians in general and residents in the metropolis in particular, to promote activities to protect the environment, also form part of Malcolm's 30th anniversary celebration. The ultimate goal is to build a very resilient city and a very sustainable one where we will live in the city and have a very good air to breathe. I have committed the city to improving the air quality that we breathe, reduce pollution and develop more carbon sinks as part of our climate change agenda that we have. According to Malcolm, Accra's greenery needs to be restored despite the massive infrastructural development. When the last tree dies, they say the last man dies. The green in the national flag signifies greenery, an opportunity of good agriculture, nice environment, and so on and so forth, for sustainable living. 
countrymen and women have destroyed consistently that green. We can revive it, regenerate growth, it will be good for our health. It will be good for the growth of this country. Melcom Group of Companies, founded in 1989 as a single department store in Accra, now has 42 branches spread across the country. So live your News 360 will back. Right, my name is Miriam Mosse Ajumai. Let's do some entertainment news tonight. Now, President Okufuado joined the chiefs and people of Jamestown, otherwise known as British Accra, to welcome Africans from the diaspora as part of the celebration of the year of return. The mini Deba marks the 400th anniversary of the arrival of the first enslaved Africans in America. <laughs> It was pure color, elegance, and culture at the Manchaguena to mark the year of return Ghana 2019. It is to encourage African Americans and the black diaspora to return to the country where the ancestors were kidnapped and enslaved. The historical tour began in Jamestown, Virginia in America to mark 400 years after the arrival of the first enslaved Africans at the London Beach site and ended at Jamestown in Accra a former port and slave market. We want to thank you for the open arms that you have received us with. We are proud to be African. We are proud to be a part of this great celebration. We are proud to be with you today. Tourism, Art and Culture Minister Barbara Otingesi lauded the contribution of Africans in the diaspora towards the country's development. This visit should be an opportunity to network Engage and form solid relationships that will endure for our mutual benefit. Now, the Ghana Armed Forces frowns on the unauthorized use of military uniforms by civilians. Celebrities who wish to wear the uniform for shows need authorization. But Kumasi Bay's gospel musician, Pa Boating, appears unaware of this directive. The gospel star Pa Boatin recently changed his style of music to a more funky type. Beyond his style of singing, the Kokoroko hate maker appears to be on a mission to rebrand. The gifted singer was spotted performing in a military attire. It is no secret. The military frowns upon the unauthorized use of the military type attire by civilians. The Ghana Armed Forces have warned that they will arrest any civilian found wearing attire that resembles military uniform, saying the trend has become a security concern. Celebs who wish to use the attire for shows are to seek authorization from the Armed Forces, but musician Pa Boating finds absolutely nothing wrong with wearing the attire. Rather, he sees himself as a soldier of Christ. You appeared on stage in a military uniform, and this is something the Ghana Armed Forces have spoken against. Do you have permission? As you can see, I am a soldier of Christ. Every evangelist or anybody who is in to win souls for Christ or crusade, you are a soldier. So I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. Yeah, but then they have a policy that you need permission from them before you wear this and there's a stern warning out there that all those who are seen in military uniform should be dealt with no no comments and as you can see i'm not in a complete ghana military yes it's, it's my it's my own outfit yeah yes but once it's a camel they have a problem with it and so when i saw you on stage it came to mind that okay so a fortnight ago they expressed this concern and this powerful musician is wearing a camel does he have permission no comments on that we'll talk about this some other time. Oh, want to know if that's a new look. <laughs> no, you know, that's, that's a new brand you want to create. No, Pablo is dynamic. Yeah. Maybe I can come on stage with Kente or something next time. You can't predict. I'm unpredictable. <laughs> All right, thanks. <laughs> That's Bob Watson there defending his style. That's about it for entertainment news tonight. There's more news on 3news.com. I'm Miriam. Have a good evening. On behalf of the rest of the Simon, say thank you. My name is Alfred Okansi. And I am Aisha Yakubu. Do have a good evening.